Hello and welcome to the Battle Line Podcast, where we have those conversations on that collision of space between community, faith, and culture. I'm one of your hosts, Matt Sadderly, and it has been a hot minute since we have had a Battle Line Podcast episode. But here with me is the National Director of Publications, my co-host on this podcast, my co-host in life. Major Jamie Satterley. Jamie, how are you doing today? I'm doing excellent. It is a beautiful fall day here in Alexandria, Virginia. So I'm just in, enjoying all the beautiful trees outside of my window. The other voice you'll hear will be from our co-host and producer, the one who makes this whole thing run, Elizabeth. Elizabeth, how are you doing today? I am so stoked to be chatting today. Cool. All right. So today we're going to uh, talk about what, what probably is... Maybe I would say, um, in a lot of cases, an unknown resource in the Salvation Army. Or if you have a core library, likely you've seen this on the shelf, but maybe you've never picked it up and look at, looked at it. And that is the Salvation Army yearbook. Uh, so, you know, when we think about yearbooks, you probably think about your school yearbook where you're flipping through and there's like a little snapshot of all your friends. It's like a, a little... Uh, a little snapshot in time of what that person looked like. And that's really kind of what this publication is. It gives us a little snapshot of what the Salvation Army looks like in each command around the world. So we'll get into all that in just a minute. But we have with us today a special guest, Lieutenant Colonel Brian Davis. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Davis comes to NHQ from the Central Territory, where he what? was the training school principal. Uh, and now he is serving as the assistant national personnel secretary, but also just received an appointment change to be the assistant national chief secretary. Did I get that right? Pretty good. Yeah. Eventually I'll get it right. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so I, someone told us now, I don't know, maybe if these are Brian's own words or maybe somebody else who knows Brian's words that he is a yearbook nerd. Are those your words, Brian? Or somebody called you out. Well, I don't know if those are my words, but I embrace them fully. <laughs> <laughs> so we thought, okay, well, if we have somebody here who just loves the yearbook so much and we want to let our, our reader, our readers, sorry, that's my <laughs> other job flowing through, our listeners know about this great resource uh, that's available. Let's, let's talk to this yearbook nerd. And see if but we see, can. But figure see, it, it makes out. sense you would call them readers because you have to read the yearbook. You're not going to listen to it. Oh, that's fair. Right. That's fair. Right. Well, Lieutenant Colonel Brian Davis, we're excited to have you on the show. How are you doing today, sir? How's life for you? Oh, I'm doing well. And now that I'm actually in the meeting, I feel so much better. <laughs> you know. So, as Major Jamie said, yes, if you have no idea what the yearbook is, if you go to the bookshelf at your core, I pretty much guarantee you there is one of these on here. The Salvation Army puts them out every year. It's called the Salvation Army Yearbook 2022. Now, before we get started, let's talk about the history of this. So, the Salvation Army Yearbook was first put out in the year, listeners, you can guess. Jamie, Lieutenant Colonel, you've got it there in front of you. What was the first year that the Salvation Army Yearbook was put out? Great answers. Great answers. <laughs> Didn't you say it was 1906? 1906. Thank you, Colonel. was the first time we had a Salvation Army yearbook. We actually have that downstairs. National Headquarters houses the archives, and we have every yearbook from 1906 down there on the shelf. So I went to the book, and I opened it up to the first cover, and the first, the first thing cover said, this is the first ever... <laughs> yearbook of the Salvation Army in 1906. <laughs> and it said, here's the purpose. And you guys tell me, uh, Major and Colonel and Elizabeth, if you think the yearbook is maintaining its purpose. It said its purpose, direct quote, is to say where we are and where we hope to be. Where we are and where we hope to be. Do you think that the Salvation Army's yearbook still accomplishes that purpose a hundred and some, and some change years <laughs> later? <laughs> Not doing the math. <laughs> Not doing the math. <laughs> Somebody wimped out there. <laughs> Does the yearbook still tell us where we are and where we ought to, where we hope to be? Well, I definitely think it. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I do not read this thing cover to cover. I do look at it, and it's a great. We'll talk about the great, what well, a great resource it is for finding certain kinds of information. Um, I do think it does a great job of telling us what is happening. Um, you know where we are physically, where we are. Uh, personnel wise, what are some of the cool things that are happening in that command? Does it tell us where we're going? I don't, I don't know. I have not been able to, 
ascertain that. What do you think, Brian, well, see, as I, the I, resident I, yearbook nerd, what do you think? Well, I think it's exciting because one of the things it does is, um, you know, sometimes in our core, in our situation, we can get so caught up in what's happening, where we are, or we, we, what we think isn't happening. Sometimes we can get um, sort of depressed if we maybe we think things aren't thriving the way we would like them to. And I think going to the yearbook is a great, great reminder that it's a global Salvation Army and that even if circumstances don't look all that great around us, that doesn't mean that God isn't blessing the Salvation Army. It doesn't mean that God isn't working through the Salvation Army. And the yearbook is just a wonderful encouragement to realize that, um, you know, God still has that in store for us as well. I don't think we have to settle for what we already have. So I love the fact that you say not only about where we are, but where we hope to be, because I think that's always the the encouragement for the Salvationist is the fact that God isn't done with the Salvation Army. God isn't done with any individual Salvationist. So the fact is, read what's going on, see what's going on, and then how can you be a part of it where you are? Amen. That's great, Colonel. Yes. I mean, I think um, that is that you're going to hear that theme throughout this episode is that the yearbook gives us a global view, a big picture view of what the Salvation Army is doing. It is very easy for us to get myopic and think that the Salvation Army, where we live, looks like that everywhere else around the world. And that couldn't be further from the truth. Jesus tells us, right, that the gospel will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And you see that through the yearbook, that that the context here in the United States is way different than in Finland and Estonia territory, which is way different than Mozambique. All right, so we talked a little bit about the history, talked about the reason. Now, we want to go through and see, hit some of the highlights. We couldn't go through all of it, obviously. You have it in your core. We recommend you pick it up. So we just want to hit a couple of highlights of what you'll see in there. And the first thing, which I think is very important for Gen Z, millennials, all of us, is you're going to see a lot of pictures. Like a high school yearbook, you're going to see a lot of pictures. It's got a lot of text, but you will see a picture on nearly every page. Uh, a sharp, nice graphic of Army work happening around the nation. And when you look at this, this goes back to Colonel's point. You get to see Salvationists in uniform all around the world. A big picture view of what's going on. Yeah, and it's very cool because, I mean, they're – for the most part, they're not like static pictures, right? It's not headshots and all that kind of stuff. It's not catalog. They're, it's not L. Yeah. You're not getting L. L. Mm. Bean here, right? So, like, there are, you know, in the front, it it goes through and does like a little bio of all the generals, every general that's ever been a general, and all that kind of stuff. So those the there are official portraits of those people in here. But when you're looking at the information on the territories, they're all action photos. Elizabeth, you would love this. I'll have to bring it to you. Uh, I just just discovered just now as I'm flipping through it that in the Korea territory, they partnered with a major food company and created sharing noodles. <gasps> it looks like little packages. It's the same kind of setup as like a little package of ramen. Um, but it has the Salvation Army shield on it. And it was an Easter charity program for food distribution. Incredible. So it's uh, like, it's so How much fun. How dare you? I had a question later for a game <laughs> and you just gave the answer to the game we haven't even played yet. Okay. Okay. Pretend like I didn't say any of that. See, that shows you how exciting the yearbook is that she plunged yeah. right in and within a minute That's or right. two found something that said, why couldn't I do that? That's why right. couldn't we do something like that? Colonel, See, what do you what do you think about the pictures? What do you think about the graphics and the images that you see in the yearbook? Well, let me say, I think they've upped their game. Because if you look back at the old ones, they're not so good. <laughs> I imagine there wasn't a high pixel camera in 1906, you know? No, but also I just think you've got more static pictures. I think you've got more sort of pose pictures. I think as, as, um, as this publication has evolved, I think it's become much more action oriented and much more ministry oriented. And I think that's a great, great um, improvement. Cool. Yep. So you're going to see pictures throughout. Um, all right, let's move to the next section. When you look in the yearbook, you're going to see what, what the purpose of this is, is where we are, like an annual report of the army. So you're going to see the Salvation Army in all the countries where the army is at work. So how many zones out there, listeners, I want you to yell at your radio right now. How many zones is the Salvation Army divided up into? 
Major, Colonel, do you want to give them the answer? Well, it's obvious. It's five. That's Come right. On. One for every finger on your hand. And then, <laughs> listeners, how many countries are is the Salvation Army at work in? Yell it into your radio. If you yell really loud, we can hear you. All right. Jamie, Colonel, how much? It are says you in asking the, me what, I'm what, asking what you it be, says now? Or it says in the actual answer. Why, why are you misleading people saying that we can hear them? <laughs> <laughs> no, if they yell loud enough, we would be able to hear them. Matt, are you asking what the yearbook says or yes, what the actual, the because say? it's changed since yes. this was printed? Well, what does the yearbook say? No, no, no okay. just tell me how many you think the Salvage Army's at work at. 133. Right, and we don't think it, we know it. Oh, drop the mic. I love it. It's one, <laughs> it is 132 in the yearbook. 132, yes, but 133. Yes, we've opened up a new work since this was printed. All right. So let me ask this question to you, but Colonel. Again, that's why you need to be a yearbook nerd. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> That's right. So you don't have to Google it. Well, so, because if your life gets complicated and you don't always keep track of all those news releases, the next volume updates you. Yep. That's right. Colonel, this question is for you and for Major Jamie. How many other countries have you been to where you have seen the Army at work? That's a personal question for you. Think on that real quick. How many other countries outside the United States have you been a part of? Not how many of you've just visited. We know you've you've probably taken a cruise somewhere, but how much have you seen the army at work in these places? You who wants to go first? I know Jamie does. <laughs> so, right. not a lot outside of the United States. Like actual engagement, I would just say two others, and Which that would two? be uh, I was in Chile, which is South America uh, West, the South America West territory. And so I spent a summer with them doing some work. And then <clears throat> side um, note for mission trips, mission trips. We've talked about that before. Very important. Yes. Go on those. Continue. That was 20 years ago now. So I'm sure it looks very different. The army there. Well, you uh, must and have then, been five when you went. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. And then we did a week um, in Trinidad and Tobago. Of working with the army there, uh, and that was about that's Caribbean territory for oh those gosh, out there. That was about seventeen years ago. So yep. uh, I need to get back get back out into the streets. But <laughs> yes, that's what uh, that would be. Small experience, ha seen it, seen it in some other places like London, but not actual engagement. How about you, Colonel? How many countries have you seen the army at work in that you've been a part of? Well, see, I've been pretty limited, too, because um, I've gone to Canada as part of like abandoned songster um, exchange weekend, that kind of thing, when we were stationed at the Nord Citadel Corps. Okay. Foreign um, exchange program right. with Canada. Check. But then I also, it's kind of tricky here because um, one of the things you'll also find out about the yearbook is that they, when they deal about countries, um, they often deal with some subdivisions. For example, the United Kingdom um, used to have like the Scotland territory and Scotland is a nation. Right. So I've actually been involved with the Salvation Army in England, Scotland and Wales. So which is now all the, it, right. Now right. It's UKI it's, territory. Correct. Right. Yes, so they hosed you. It was four. Now it's two. <laughs> so I don't know if you can say that the UKI territory hosed us, Jamie. <laughs> And I, don't no, know, not, I don't think we're allowed to say that officially. We're leaving it in. We're leaving it in. That stays in, Elizabeth. That stays in. All right. Well, here's the other thing. And now this is where this drives some people crazy. But there's a lot of statistics in here. But um, there's some fascinating things with this. So here's my question to you. I'm going to say this. And without looking in the yearbook, you cheaters, I want you to guess as best as you can. Now, I know Colonel probably has this memorized. But let's see how it goes. How many core do you think there are? around the world because the yearbook will tell you how many core are around the world take a guess see i don't know because this book has been out for so long that's true i read that a long time ago i'm only going by what the book said when it was printed early this year if you said jamie you want to take like jamie's quickly flipping pages <laughs> i don't note for the audio <laughs> listeners at home you can't see jamie she can't get an answer wrong so she's looking through the oh this is not yeah, an open i have book. no idea text message. there are fourteen thousand over fourteen thousand five hundred core across the salvage army world and how many uh, go ahead colonel well, let me just say though that number is always changing oh yes. definitely so that's why they they have to stop at a certain point in time and just say this is when we're calling it. When Colonel, do you know off the top of your head when is this book published? What time of year? 
I'm just asking because I really don't know the answer to that. Well, we usually get it early in the year, but I don't know when the cutoff time is in terms of when they compile the data. Sure. That makes sense. But it does about- come early in the year, and I look forward to it. At least my wife will tell you that's kind of like Christmas for me. <laughs> How many officers do you think there are in the Salvation Army world? Price is right rules. Take a guess without going over. Three. No, just All right. go ahead and toss, Matt. It's going 20, to be too long. 27,000, over 27,000 Salvation Army officers in the world. And then perhaps the most important question, how many senior soldiers are there in the Salvation Army world? And Jamie got the answer. I see it in her <laughs> eyes. I saw you flipping pages. Yeah, this one I got. It's just over 1.2 million. 1.2 million Salvation Army soldiers in the world. Follow-up question, Jamie, which you won't find in your book. What – out of the top 10 largest armies in the world, where would the Salvation Army be ranked in that list? Number one. Number four. <laughs> 1. I thought, I thought the only reason he's asking this question is if it's number one. Senior soldiers. <laughs> if the Salvation Army was a standing military army like the world thinks, we would be the fourth largest military. Who, who in is the, the world. first biggest? China. And let me say it's With a shame million. that the listeners could not see the smile on Matt's face. <laughs> <laughs> That's so. usually how this goes. He enjoys. He really has fun with these games because he likes to taunt me. Now, when you we record, well, he but likes this, it because he's always the one asking the question. He never yes, has to right. produce an answer. There, there are. There's a lot of statistics in there. Like, there's a whole statistical page. There's a whole finance page for each of the for each of the territories as well. And what you what we want you to remember is when you see these things, don't look at statistics as just numbers. Remember, every number is a soul. Every number is a soul out there in the world that the Army has touched somehow. So, Major Jamie, Colonel, uh, what do you think about the the, I always say this word wrong, the statistics that are in the yearbook? Well, I think it's pretty – I mean, it's pretty handy information, especially like in a a role like mine where sometimes you have to report on things or you're like, okay, I need to find a supporting – something to support this or I need to verify that this claim is (laughs) accurate. Let me look in the yearbook. I do think that this section that's at the front. So when you open the yearbook, there's a little section at the front that has a couple of um, a couple of different things. And it's, I think, my favorite part of it. It talks about significant events. If you like a quick snapshot, that's the place to go. Some significant events that happened in the previous year. But it's also really helpful. Sometimes I think, like we talked about, you can get so like focused on – what you feel about the Salvation Army in in your location. Uh, But I think it's also helpful. There's this table of important events from 1829 all the way Mm -hmm. through the year. Um, And it it just kind of goes through, looking through this thing, we used it for uh, an article, I want to say December 2020 of Peer Magazine. And so I was reading through it looking for some significant events. And there's some stuff in here that we did in the early days that I had no idea (laughs) that we did. I was like, oh, the Salvation Army was involved in that. Um, And then even, you know, reading some of the things even more recent, um, you know, it's just a good reminder of what the Lord has done or allowed us to be a part of as the Salvation Army Um, And some of the incredible ministry that's happened. So I think that's my favorite part of the yearbook is this section up here where their statistics are found. And there's just so much helpful information. And it's a good reminder when you get discouraged or, you know, when you're caught up in here's the issues. It's a good reminder of like, look at what the Lord has done. And then a reminder of what he will continue to do. How about you, Colonel? Well, I thought um, one of the things you said was so important is remembering that it's always about people. Mm. That those numbers are not just numerals on a page. They represent people, people whose lives have been influenced um, by the ministry of the Salvation Army and people who are part of this body of Christ. And I think that should be exciting for us. But I also think you want to look at those numbers that are on the financial page, because I think they also remind us that God is gracious. God provides. God blesses his army, but that we're meant to be a part of that blessing. And so when you hear the stuff about world services and you think, why are they always harping about money for these people around the world? It's because they need the money. The army, for it to grow the way God wants it to grow, people have to support it. And those financial pages show us that we are good stewards. It shows 
who gives what money. And I'll tell you one thing, uh, Matt and Jamie, I'm humbled every time I look in, the, in those pages and I see what some of the poorest people in the world give to world services. These are people who have next to nothing, but they feel blessed to have the opportunity to support the work of God around the world. And I think that just humbles me to say, why would I begrudgingly give anything when they, out of absolute poverty, are giving to help the work of the Salvation Army? That's and I good. Hope that just encourages all of us to give generously and to give with grateful hearts because of that. That's so good, Colonel. So good. Great stuff. And now let's get into it. So what Colonel was saying there about how each territory um, gives – if you, the bread and butter of the yearbook is these snapshots of each territory in the world, the, the bread and butter of it all. So if you go through the yearbook, you're going to see alphabetically each command slash territory in the Salvation Army world. You're going to get their leaders, a current listing of the territorial commander, the chief secretary. Uh, that's the second in command for all of these for that territory. You're going to get a summary a little bit of, of narrative, some stories of what's going on there. And then you're going to get some pictures and uh, statistics. Like it'll tell you how many soldiers are in this, junior soldiers are in this territory, which is always phenomenal. You want to talk about junior soldiers, look up anything in the Africa zone and prepare to be blown away. But so this is a bread and butter. This is where you can pick up the, what I would say, what I would strongly encourage our listeners to do is p- pick one of these territories and make that your a prayer your prayer focus, because this will give you some things you can be praying about. Listen to the story. Listen to what they've been doing. See how the army in these other places around the world has been going. So I have some questions here for you, another little game. But before we get to that game, I'm asked Major Jamie and Colonel Davis, what what do you think about these little, like this, the bread and butter, the bulk of the yearbook? What do you think about these little territorial snapshots? So I'm really super thankful that these are in here. I have util- utilized these. Uh, so sometimes people will say like, what does the Salvation Army look like in, or is the Salvation Army doing anything like in the Middle East? Right. Where you think like, okay, that may not be a place where we have a lot of work going on. But if you look in here, you'll see we are present in the Middle East in a couple of different places in Bahrain and Oman and the UAE um, and in Kuwait. And so it's to me it's interesting to see what what is the army doing in places where the message of the army might not generally be well received or uh, maybe not well received but discouraged um, by leadership um, and so to see see what the army is doing in theirs I also think it's helpful there's a couple of things that they include at the beginning of every one like it tells what zone it, it's in it tells what countries are included in that territory it also tells you what they call the Salvation Army in that in that location because it's not called the Salvation Army everywhere. Um, and so how do, how do people refer to the Salvation Army in that place? It talks about what language, uh, what languages are being used, how the gospel is being spread through the di- different cultures. And then it does share like uh, what periodicals are being received, which I also appreciate uh, being in the pubs department. I get to see a lot of those publications come through this office. And so it's really fascinating to be able to read the work that's happening there, but to then also be able to kind of make the connection with the publications that I get. uh, And then I'm able to look at each month as they come in. By the way, I would like to clarify that when when Jamie's talking about the pubs, she's not talking about, you know. (laughs) Yes. Sorry. Yes. 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 You got to make sure. Not the early army day pubs where they, you know, are going in and (laughs) preaching in those places. Pubs, publications. How about you, Colonel? What do you think about the snapshots of each territory? What's the highlights for you? That's why you read the book. <laughs> I mean, because that's the exciting part where, again, you, you can get caught up with what's going on in your core or you can be, you know, sort of uh, really. But boy, when you read what God is doing through the Salvation Army around the world, stuff you've never known, you've never thought about. Um, It's just amazing. And um, I just find that so encouraging. And I hope we find it challenging to say, why aren't we doing those kinds of things? Or maybe it wouldn't work in our cultural context, but what's something I could do where I am? Because, you know, a lot of times we worry about a program or we worry about something. But sometimes you find in these little snapshots, somebody just does something. For example, a lot of times the work that starts in a country is because some salvationist just migrated there. And then they want to start the Salvation Army. And so they start the process and whatever. Well, 
wherever I go, I'm the Salvation Army. So I can think about that same concept for my own life. Yeah, that's great, Colonel. It is. I want to reiterate what Colonel said there. It is very easy in our culture in the West to be to get down on the Salvation Army sometimes to say, look at the culture, look at like how much has the world has changed. But when you look at the yearbook, you see that the like Colonel said, the the spirit of the Lord is still moving through the Salvation Army in ways that we can't imagine. So if you need a pick me up, if you need a reminder of why we're doing what we're doing, take a look at the yearbook. Go ahead, Major Jamie, say what you're going to say, and then I'm going to ask you these questions. No, I was going to say there's. It's also, I mean, you get to see all the fascinating ways that the Salvation Army is meeting needs that are specific to that culture, right? So like uh, I'm looking at the Netherlands, Czech Republic, Slovakia territory. They have recycling services, a reshare foundation uh, where they're doing a lot of work with recycling. Uh, If you look at Japan, where you think about cultures like Japan, where um, like ancestors and and your, uh, you know, older generations are very, revered, right? It, it's very important to them to take care of those people. And they have homes, you know, homes for the, they call them homes for the aged, <laughs> homes for the aged and retired officer apartments and things like this, where making sure that we're taking care of that population that's so honored. Uh, and so it's just, it's beautiful to see like how the Salvation Army is meeting specific cultural uh, needs cultural important how the Salvation Army is engaged in those things that are important in the culture, but in a way that also brings across the gospel of Jesus. So I think I think Jamie cool. makes a great point too that you know a lot of times you can just think the Salvation Army looks like your Salvation Army everywhere you go, but when you read through the yearbook, you find out that the army is influential in hospitals in India, um, all sorts of schools in Indonesia. I mean, the Salvation Army is a major player in some parts of the world for providing services that we often attribute to government or to some other um, entity. But the Army serves that role, the Army to which you and I belong. And I think that's exciting stuff to say we are making a difference for any number of people. And we do it because we love Jesus and we want them to come to know him. Perfect. Perfect. That's great. All right. So here's what we're going to do. I went through the yearbook very quickly through the summary pages of the territories, and I picked three things, one of which you already know because Major Jamie tipped the hand. She's of, advanced. Of these things. She knew it. So I'm going to read it. I'll read it off. You try to guess what Salvation Army territory it's in. Okay. So the first one, the Salvation Army partnered with a major food company to create sharing noodles. What territory is that from? I know from? this one. What is it, Jamie? <laughs> Korea. Korea. Very good. The Salvation Army in Korea, Korea territory. All right. This one. By the way, Matt, I just want to point out that, Jamie, are you looking at Korea? Uh, no, I can flip there real quick, though. What other countries are a part of that territory? I bet people don't know that Mongolia. Yes. Yep. And Cambodia. Yeah, so it's Kingdom of Cambodia. The Democratic People's Republic of North Korea, Mongolia, and the Republic of Korea, which is South Korea. So think about that. That Korean territory based in South Korea, think about how far it is from there to Mongolia, how far from there to Cambodia. But yet that's what they're doing. So don't, don't let anyone limit what God can do through you. All right. So number two, this one is not a thing the army's doing. I just have to mention this one. This might be my favorite question on the battle line podcast of all time. Why I was flipping through, I found this name in a, in a territory in the world. We have an officer whose name is Lieutenant Colonel Abraham Lincoln. There is a Lieutenant Colonel Abraham Lincoln in the army world. He's the program secretary in what territory? Take a guess. He has to be in Africa. He is in India Central. India Central. The India Central Territory. Lieutenant Colonel Abraham Lincoln, if you are listening to this show, (laughs) we would love to have you on the podcast one day just because you might win for the most epic name in Salvation Army history. Uh, Interestingly enough, their youth officer, now not his last name, but his first two names are Major William Booth. His name is Major William Booth Chattapalli. Yeah, the other thing about interesting in the um, Indian territories is you'll find a lot of similar names. So, like, um, there's a lot of them with the last name of Masi or whatever, M-A-S-I-A-H. 
M-A-S-I-H, yes. So it's interesting to kind of do that, to find, and a number of people Christian, um, because of their um, religion, it becomes their name, you know, or whatever. So. Oh, wow. I've heard that too, that like in the Africa zone, it is very, it is honorable to to name your children after um, somebody, like if you're, a, a, so, like that's why you see a lot of William Boos or Frederick mm-hmm. Boos or even Shaw Clifton's or these names in Africa, because, you know, you name, you name your, your son or daughter after, after honored uh, people, honored people. Um, all right, last one. What territory in the world held a holiness meeting on national TV? They held a national. They had a holiness meeting on national television. On the I'm going to butcher the name, but the uh, uh, I think the name of the TV channel is called Le Y L E Yale, something like that. Maybe that helps you. They had their holiness meeting broadcast live on national television. Any guesses? I'll give you a hint. It's a Scandinavian country. Norway. Finland. The Finland. <laughs> That's what I said. The Finland and Estonia <laughs> territory. Yeah. Uh, broadcast their holiness meeting live on national TV. And these are things that you would discover when you're uh, looking through the yearbook. All Did right. They to reveal the ratings. Oh, yeah. That would be that'd be cool. Like YouTube views. Oh. All right. Last, <laughs> analytics. Last, Let's talk last, about analytics. Last section here. Um, we'll hit this really quickly. And then I want to ask the last question. Why does the yearbook matter? So that's going to come to you. But the last section, and I didn't even know this was in there until I was preparing for this uh, episode. If you're a Salvation Army officer, it po- the yearbook will put your retirement, all the retirements and all the promotions to glory of mm-hmm. officers uh, are what happened in around the world now by for those territory of you, by territory so i don't know if if the listeners out there if you don't know the lingo promotion to glory is if you're a salvation army officer and soldier but this one only lists officers because to list soldiers would be way too long for the yearbook uh is to uh is is people who have died people have died and who have gone to glory gone to heaven um the salvation army says they are promoted to glory so um why is that important major colonel why is that important to have in there well, I think so. I'm thinking back to I don't know if it's listed out in this one. I was looking to see if it it listed, but I was uh, at a presentation by the general where he was talking about some kind of some of this kind of information, and they showed every officer who had died from COVID. Yeah, that was the general, and that was in the latest issue of the Officer Magazine. Gotcha. So um, I think you know a lot of times. I think it's just sometimes we don't think about things like that. These people are out there, especially in some some places on the other side of the world where they're working in some some conditions that uh, we would just be astonished by. Uh, and they're faithful and they're diligent and they're out there. And sometimes it costs them, you know, their very life. Mm-hmm. Uh, and sometimes, you know, over here where we have so much um, opportunity and so much, uh, you know, privilege that we don't always think about the environments and the things that are happening across the world. And so it would, to me, it was really kind of sobering to think like these people are, are they're putting their lives on the line to spread the gospel uh, and to do the mission. Uh, And so it was a good reminder yeah, just to say, Jamie, just I like I thought um, I want to say there I, I was looking through the yearbook and prep for this. Like there were I didn't realize that there were salvationists killed in Indonesia in the terrorist attack in 2020. Mm-hmm. There were salvationists that were involved in that. Again, things you almost never hear about. But those are our brothers and sisters from around the world. Keep going, Major Jamie. I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say. And sometimes you you see those stories, especially like if you happen to know somebody who's serving on the mission field, you might see those stories um, on social media or somebody might say, hey, This just happened. It affects people in this way. But if you don't, if you're not friends with, you know, people who are talking about those kind of things, or you're just not active on social media, you might never know that that the Salvation Army is being affected um, by some of these things. And so I think it's just a good reminder. For me, it's a good, it helps me to refocus a little bit, right? To to refocus on, um, you know, just what what the Salvation Army is doing, what other officers are putting on there. It, it also helps me like, Jamie, get it together. <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Sometimes I have to say that to myself. You need to get outside of yourself and think about like what, what this really looks like in other places. Um, and so, you know, it's a helpful refocus for me. Yeah. 
Great. How about you, Colonel? What what's what's uh, why do you think it's so important for these? Well, I really I really like Jamie's answer, but when you first said it to me, I, I think for me what it did is I think it just reminds us that every officer matters. And you know, sometimes in life we get caught up in I want my name to be in big print. I want to go in the yearbook and I see I'm listed as territorial leader or commander or chief secretary or whatever. And I'm just not convinced that God really cares that much about that. I think he cares about people who are faithfully discharging their their ministerial responsibilities day after day. And I think that's what that wonderful reminder at the end is. When you see every, every officer recognized for that retirement, Every officer recognized for when they get that promotion to glory. It's That's what I'm really working for. Um, sometimes we can get caught up in wanting a particular status or rank or whatever when God's just wanting people who minister faithfully day after day and they await that final um, welcome home, well done. Yeah. Faithful servant. That's great, Colonel. That is great. All this is great stuff. And I think, too, the only other thing I would add is I just am reminded when I read the retirements and the promotions to glory that the sal- it literally, what's the quote? We stand on the shoulders of giants. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the, the Salvation Army is where it is, is because of what Colonel just said the faithful service of soldiers and officers around the world who day in and day out don't get their name in a book, but they just do the work that God has called them to be silently serving, silently suffering, and steadfastly just being faithful to him. And then that we are where we are today because of the work that they did yesterday. And may we prove to be faithful um, right. to the generation that comes behind us. All right. So last question before we ask, before we close out, and this is what I say, Major Jamie and Colonel Davis, there's a lot of young people out there that listen to this show, a lot of youth leaders. Why does the yearbook matter? Why is it something I should take a look at? Why should I take it off the – why should I just not throw it on the core library bookshelf and, and forget about it until next year? Why does it matter? I mean, I think for me, again, it's just a, a reminder of just how big the Salvation Army is, just how vast uh, you know the ministry opportunities are. But I think like one of my favorite things about having – Uh, had the opportunity to serve here in HQ is that I've been able to experience the army, uh, you know, across the nation now to see what it looks like in different pockets. I was very surprised to, to, you know, to, to know that even within this country, the Salvation Army doesn't look like, uh, it did in my experience in the South everywhere across the nation. I've learned a lot. It's broadened my vision. I don't have the opportunity to go all across the world, seeing all the Salvation Army, you know, expressions. But by looking in the yearbook, I can, uh, you know, see these kind of vast differences in the different kind of ministries that are happening in these different cultural contexts. Um, and so, uh, Tim, I mean, it's just fascinating to me to see how the Salvation Army is meeting needs in those specific contexts. Um, you know, and then it's also kind of a an encouragement to look at my own community and think, okay, well, how can the Salvation Army maybe do something that that might be considered a little bit out of the box to meet need here? Uh, You know, it doesn't have to look the same everywhere. It shouldn't look the same everywhere. We should be uh, meeting that localized context. So uh, it's a encouragement and a challenge, I guess. Good. Colonel, why, why does it matter? It's funny because I'm thinking, have you not been paying attention during this whole <laughs> podcast? I mean, I mean, I would think that just from what you've already heard, it's like, why wouldn't you want to go to that core library or why wouldn't you hunt down your officer and say, where is that yearbook? And why hasn't somebody talked to me about it before now? I mean, I just think it's so obvious. But I think um, Jamie just really hit it on the head and the fact that encouragement and challenge. Yep. God is at work. How am I going to partner with him? And, um, you know, why would we want all the good stuff to be happening somewhere else in the world with the Salvation (laughs) Army? Why wouldn't I want that where I am? But you know what? I can't want it unless I'm going to volunteer to be a part of it. That's good. And I think, um, you know, if if you want to be encouraged, realize that if the encouragement of the yearbook is going to be the challenge of, so what are you doing about it? What are you allowing God to do in the Salvation Army through you? 
And, uh, you know, if you're not ready to report for that, maybe you shouldn't go near the yearbook because, you know, mm. uh, I, I think it's got to do both things. Can't take the training principle out of that man right there. <laughs> All right. Um, imagine with me for a moment, please. This is I'll just end uh, our portion here before we get to the last question. Imagine with me, listeners, please, the most like a beautiful painting, one of the most beautiful paintings that you've ever seen. And you're trying to describe that. But your only way you're able to look at that painting is through a straw. Imagine that you're looking through a straw and you're trying to look this painting up and down and try to figure out what's going on. But you can't. All you can see is whatever you can see through the bottom of the straw. And you're trying to describe what's going on. I think sometimes that's how we look at the Salvation Army and the church where we are, our own local context. We are trying to look at God's big picture, God's big world through a little straw of what we see every day. But then when you take that straw away and you get to take a step back and see the whole picture for what it is, it will absolutely blow you away. And that's what the Salvation Army yearbook does. It is a taking away of the straw and seeing the whole painting that God is doing. And even then, when we think about what God's doing, not just through the Salvation Army, but in ways we can't even see around the world through the other churches, through the other Christian the faith, for all the other Christians that are out there. God is doing an even bigger picture that we can't see. So to take away the yearbook, I mean, to take to 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 pull the straw down is to take a look at the yearbook and to see what the Salvation Army is doing around the world. Major Jamie, hit us with our last question, please. Yeah, so it's that time where we ask, uh, you know, our favorite question at the end of the episode: What is bringing you joy? All right, what is bringing you joy this week? So Elizabeth. You want to go first? What's bringing you joy? Sure. Okay. I am loving Celebrity Jeopardy. <laughs> okay. It's good. It's good. Yeah. Some fun folks. The questions are a little easier. So more my <laughs> Wait, speed. What, are, so you you trying, what are you trying to say, Elizabeth? Well, are you trying- I'm just saying like, I better with like entertainment, like music, TV questions, not like history and geography, not my jam. So it's fun. Yeah. yeah. That is good. I've seen, I've only seen one episode um, so far. I can't remember who was on it. I, I can't recall that quick, but it was great. It was a good episode. And they did much better than I thought they were going to do. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> You're pleasantly surprised. <laughs> yep. For me, um, it's the Bible Project on YouTube. I have really into the Bible Project does some amazing stuff, um, amazing resources out there. But if you search the Bible Project on YouTube, what I'm really into right now is they have a little map, a drawing, a cartoon drawing of every book of the Bible. You can click on each individual book and it'll give you a, a cartoon overview of, of, of that book. And so right now in my personal reading, I'm in second Thessalonians and man, blown away. It helps you understand the Bible so much better. So I appreciate that. Colonel, what's, uh, what's giving you joy, sir? Well, in the most immediate context, the fact that I made it through here pretty unscathed. <laughs> so, um, and, um, uh, Hope I didn't do anything too terribly embarrassing. Uh, but also, I think I'm um, just, I'm enjoying core life. I'm enjoying, um, as training principal, um, you know, I've always really enjoyed being a core officer, but I really enjoy being a, a training principal. But in the process, I really didn't get to be a, a really good soldier at my core. And so I'm enjoying that at the Alexandria Corps, I'm getting able to be involved with band and songsters and and just kind of getting to know people and, and, and feeling like I'm a part of that core fellowship. And I think that always brings joy. Awesome. All right, Major Jamie, what's giving you joy? All right. This I've just came after the nice Jesus answer. So sorry, taking it back. Not that it's not, <laughs> not Jesus, but you know what I'm saying? I cannot wait so, to hear what's coming. It's not bad. So here's what's bringing me joy this week is audio books. Now, let me say this. Uh, I do a, I've always loved to read uh, but right now, because of the job I have, I do a lot of reading because I'm in school. I'm doing a ton of reading. So I don't really get to read for fun anymore, um, especially when I'm in the middle of a class. I just don't have time to read for fun. Um, so I've started checking out audiobooks from our library and listening to them while I cook dinner or while I'm you know, on my commute. Um, and so it gives me a chance to get back to those, like listening to stories, fiction, all that kind of stuff that I love. But without having, you know, I don't have the time to actually read it, but I still get to participate in it and enjoy it. So super thankful right now for audiobooks and for the public library, which provides them to me for free. <laughs> well, I'm just glad to know that in your graduate work, what you're submitting is not fiction. Yeah. <laughs> Colonel, Listen, right now, my, my reading for that is not 
uh, bringing me joy. Right now, it's about creation care and climate change, which is making me um, sad. Oh, sorry <laughs> to hear that. Good, good information, but also like, oh, uh, the apocalypse is coming. <laughs> Colonel, <laughs> That's what it I feels like. <laughs> one last question for you, sir, and this one's a surprise. If people are out there are like, man, I really want this yearbook. How, how could I get one? What would you tell that person who really, if they don't have the yearbook on their core library and they want one, how can they, how can they get that? How can they find it? Well, I would talk to your core officer because if you don't routinely purchase stuff in the Salvation Army, you may not feel comfortable how to do that. But otherwise, I would trade check with your trade department. Go ahead and you can order that. There's nothing top secret about it. There's nothing about, you know, it's hard to get. Um, but I would talk to your core officer because really your core library should have that. And in fact, if it's not in your core library, it might be that it's in your core officer's library. So you may just want to go because my guess is they're not spending every other day looking in the yearbook to let you see about borrowing it. That would be my suggestion. I uh, One other thing, core officers, while you're out there, I know I said we we're going to end this episode, but my uh, dad, Major Mark Satterley, was a core officer for years. Shout out, dad. And uh, not a sponsor. And so he would always get an extra copy of the Salvation Army yearbook every year. And he would he would buy an extra one and he would donate it to the public library in the community where he lived so that if people ever were doing research on the Salvation Army, they'd be able to go to their library and find the yearbook. Great the idea for your dad. Kudos to him. Yep. Shout out, dad. I wish I'd thought of it. All right. That's going to end this episode of the Battle Line Podcast. We are very grateful for Lieutenant Colonel Brian Davis, who will soon be the Assistant National Chief Secretary of the Salvation Army of the United States. I and mean, I'll still love the yearbook. <laughs> Thank you for being on the episode and joining us, sir. Thanks we really appreciate invite. you having me. So be sure to subscribe to the Battle Line which, by the way, we should mention, is in the yearbook. We made the yearbook. The Battle Line Ooh. podcast is in the Salvation Army yearbook. So be sure to subscribe to the Battle Line wherever you listen to podcasts and check out the Peer website at peermag.org and on all the socials at peer.magazine. Until next time, folks, this has been the Battle Line podcast. Bye, everybody. See ya. See ya.